Hello my soccer universe. Today I'm a little bit late, although I had everything prepared even sooner than usual, but had a few appointments in the morning. So yeah, let's get straight to it. Maybe this time I can keep it under 10 minutes. I doubt it. I barely ever managed it, although there are only eight games. But if I keep yapping like that, we won't get there. Um, I won't spend much time on Bosnia against Herzegovina against Poland, uh, although it was an entertaining game, but I didn't see much uh, of that high Hey, Radinovic gave them a, a Bosnia the lead through a penalty, but Glick just before the half equalized, and then I think Poland got a uh, deserved overall win uh, through Grozicki in the 67th. Um, as I said, it was a lively match. We saw the new Bosnia home jerseys, they're still playing with the old away jerseys. The big game, of course, and I'm wearing Italy was the Netherlands against Italy, where Italy really, really played much, much better than they did against Bosnia, actually showing uh, what they're capable of. And, you know, we see kind of the weird trend. Uh, the Italians play now this offensive style with a young crop of players, which is quite attractive, but they still have some trouble against more defensive opponents. And yeah, I'm wearing my only Italy away jersey. I want to get this current away jersey. Uh, I actually would like to get the full Italy set because it's a really, really, really nice set that they have, although I'm not so sold on the flowery pattern, but overall it really looks very, very well put together. I thought that maybe for the first few exchanges, the Dutch were the slightly better team, but uh, around the 10th minute, Italy took over and the Dutch did not know what to do actually, uh, which was surprise, surprising to me. They were completely caught off guard by the fast uh, Italians who um, actually controlled the midfield. You know, you had um, in the Jorginho, you had Barella in there, uh, you had Locatelli who played an outstanding game. Barella kind of always uh, drawing the strings. Um, the only one that I did not like really was Spinazzola. He seemed to be a little bit of a risk to me. Uh, and up front, Immobile and Insigne. Yes, Immobile again did not score, but at least he uh, contributed big to, to the attack. It's just when he had the chance to score, um, it was almost, how, how to say, laughable how inept he looked in converting chances. Um, but yeah. Chances came. I mean, it was mostly Barella, it was Saniola, it was Insigne. All of those guys producing. It was an entertaining game, uh, be mostly because of Italy, but also the Dutch tried to play forward. Um, but it was also, um, I don't want to say cagey, because it was in, in, in entertaining, but uh, the Dutch really tried to neutralize them, the Italians, which to me is... Never thought I would uh, utter this, but... Uh, it was what, what, what it was. I also found it kind of in interesting how often Chiellini and Van Dijk matched up against each other, especially on set pieces and so on, because I mean, those are two defenders. That was very interesting to see. Uh, for the Dutch, I thought their own had kind of, um, yeah, not so good game, and especially Hattepur uh, really. Uh, I guess his Italian could have been a little bit better. But. Um, as I said, the Italians had chances. Uh, I think Barella had the biggest one uh, during the game and then he also uh, scored the open after a really nice cross by um, um, Immobile. The one thing though is at the time Zaniolo had, had to already come off uh, potentially, I don't know, I have not heard it potentially with another uh, ligament tear, which would be devastating because he just came off one. Um, yeah, I think Zaniola has to uh, hold off playing a little bit. Second half, again, the Italians came out, but uh, about the 60th minute, both teams seemed gassed from the high intensity that they, that they were playing. And that actually, um, you saw that the Italians got a little bit more sloppy. I mean, uh, Immobile should have scored one. I think Insigne had had another good chance. And very late on, uh, K uh, Moise Kane, they all sure should have scored, but no. Uh, once they got gassed, the midfield was completely abandoned <laughs> and it was the Dutch who actually had a little bit more. I think Bergwijn had a chance already in the first half, the second half, I think uh, it was Memphis Depay who had a really good uh, chance. In the end, the Dutch were pressing for the forward equals, but I have to say it would have not been so. It, Italy was the better team and Italy now also is first, takes first place in the group. Uh, 
point ahead of the Netherlands who are level with Poland. Thanks to, gold uh, thanks to the head-to-head, -head, they are um, ahead of Poland and Bosnia. Yeah, looks now set to be the team that will finish last, but uh, both Italy and the Netherlands really, really uh, are good teams. And if the Italians keep playing like that, especially against non-defensive uh, opponents, they can beat any anyone. The one thing is against the defensively sound opponent, the Italians have some trouble and this is also kind of weird to say, uh, does not compute in my dictionary, let's put it that way. Uh, does not compute is also what I have to say about Austria. Uh, they played so great in Norway and then the coach again is fidgeting around with his tactics. Uh, Schlager should not play as a number 10 instead of being a little bit more on the defensive and uh, more on the wing. They never got into the game and they had horrible defending. Um, after Coman um, assist, Ali Beck makes it already third minute, one nil, and you know, Alexander Schlager, the last goalie, is the national team goalie. I don't think he has any fault in anything, uh, but on the other side, I also have, have had to say, I wish that he was at the height that he was last year in the Europa League, because I think he could have saved maybe one goal with a little bit more awareness. Not that it was his mistake, but uh, just a, a feeling. Austria was irked by that and really wanted to get um, uh, the equalizer they had. They hit the post, I think, um, through Gregoric, it was, or Sabitzer, uh, and then Baumgarten after a nice assist by Lionel. That was the one goal, good to the good attack, made it 1-1. Uh, and from that moment on, I think actually Austria was better, but could not convert. And this is the story that keeps going with Austria. They cannot uh, convert their chances. Quick thing on the new jerseys. I actually thought they looked much better in play. And it really looks like this traditional vest, we call it Trachten Weste. Um, that, you know, the look is actually not that, that bad, although it's a very unusual look for Austria. But it looks kind of... Um, country formal <laughs> in, in, in a way. Just imagine lederhosen instead of the white pants. Second half, Austria tries to press and invites Romania uh, scoring goals. Grigore, uh, I don't know what they thought about defending. Uh, he is very, very free there. And then Porsche with a horrible mistake invites Maxim who with a wonderful lob makes it 3-1 in 70th. In a way, the game was done, but you know, Onisivo pulls one back in the 80, 81st and I actually thought there were chances to get the equalizer, but it just not Punch is missing and yes, Alaba and Anatovic were missing and yes, we can play quite well without them. It's the coach that holds us back. I want him gone, really. I, I know his results, he always saves himself, but he's not bringing this team forward. We should be much, much better. Uh, and to show how it could be done, I mean, Norway completely destroyed Northern Ireland. Uh, with Holland uh, assisting one and scoring two, uh, it was a very open uh, op uh, op opening campaign with Elianus getting a second the goal. The McNair equalizes and Holland in his unimitable manner makes it two one. And I really wonder he's 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 a Tom Norwegian. He doesn't score headers that often. So that was also Sirloth who really helped already in the Aust Austria game. Holland, I think this is something to watch for. I think that's the one thing the Norwegians learned from the game. Sirloth and Holland uh, work well together. Holland assists the second one by Sirloth and then actually gets uh, a fifth. The Erling Holland show continues. Um, I also need to say something about the Czechs against the Scots um, because I wanted to mention my match earlier, I always forgot. The Czech Republic, after they, after they uh, beat the Slovaks, had two corona cases in the stuff and a protocol in the Czech Republic says, okay, you cannot play, you all have to go away. And the Czechs actually said, no, this game is not going to happen. We have said this game has to happen. So what they had to do is they had to find a completely new squad, a completely new coaching staff, and it was a makeshift Czech team. And to their credit, they played actually right good, quite well, and with Pesek scoring already in the 12th minute. Problem is, the Scots scored two more uh, dikes in the 27th equalizer and a penalty by Christie. The Czechs should have equalized. And I, 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 I don't know what speaks is more for, for the depth that the Czechs actually have, or that the Scots are really not that great of a team. Uh, that was a victory that probably was not all that deserved. Um, not all that deserved was probably also the drop by Slovakia and Israel, although it lasted for a long time. I mean, Israel was on the front foot having the chances with the first chance. Duris makes it 1-0 for the Slovaks, who then, you know, shut up shop 
and only very late in stoppage time uh, Elm Keys can equalize for them. So if we look now at the standings in League uh, B, Romania takes the lead in the Austria group and Austria only ahead of Norway because of the head-to-head, -head, similar as we've been uh, the Dutch and uh, Poland. And in Group B2, Scotland is in the lead, but as I said, it's a very quick question. It's because the Czechs, I think the Czechs are the class of this group, but it's because they had to um, completely exchange their squad. And I think this is a big um, question mark hanging over any tournament that's going to be played. Um, even the leagues, how is it going to continue? Brief League C, we had Kazakhstan, Belarus uh, very early. I forgot, I forgot, but well, I probably would have put it on the screen. Um, Belarus taking twice the lead. Uh, it was a surprisingly live, lively game, but the um, uh, winning goal by Lisakovic in 86 was preceded by a horrible defensive error. I think the, the throwing was completely botched, and then Lisakovic just has to run the keeper and pull it in, in the net. And also uh, Albania, Lithuania, similar, uh, you know. Lithuania gets the uh, goal through Kaslauskas, although Albania basically shot themselves in the foot for that one as well and didn't help them get a red card. Well, and in that League C, we have now all teams level on point. And it's, again, um, we need to apply all the all tiebreakers at the moment. Kazakhstan is on top and Albania because they had some bigger wins and that's down to goal difference. Now. Um, what is on the menu for today? Uh, San Marino Liechtenstein, of course, at three o'clock. Not sure if that actually is accurate now. I have to check that again. Um, just let me check here because I think it's all at 8.45. No, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. It's no, the uh, um, some religion is at 845. Everything is 845 except Armenia, Estonia, and Georgia, North Macedonia. Those are played at six o'clock. If you want, uh, the big one is the World Cup final rematch between France and Croatia, Sweden, Portugal. Uh, watch Portugal. Por Por Portugal is fun to watch. Belgium, Iceland could also be Denmark, England. I think there are four games late that you can all choose from. Anyway. Let me know what you thought about the games yesterday and which games you watched. I, I was really impressed by Italy. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you um, enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, consider subscribing to my channel to keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.